Okay, so now we're gonna get into adding content to the section areas and let me show you really fast how I edited um, the header so that now our navigation is centered. So one of the little troubleshooting things you're gonna have to do back and forth, back and forth all the time is come in and edit your code and get things kind of exactly where you want them using padding and margins. So what I did was we had added all the table widths and margins. I took off the heights of the table and then in the header, I went down to the div that's inside that called navigation, which will be located somewhere around here. I'm probably just missing it right there. Navigation, and I added a little bit of padding to the top to push the table down to get it to fit. And I minus that padding from the height. So originally it was 60, now it's 50 height with 10 padding top. I took off the background color from that, and now we should have a nice, neatly positioned table. Now that is going to be different for your site depending on the size of your typeface. So the reason I ended up having to do that in the first place is because when I applied my heading tag it made this much larger and it changed the size of the table a little bit. So I had to push it around. So you will individually have to adjust that. Your adjustments may be different than 10 padding top and 50 height. It may be something like 5 padding <coughs> top and 55 height or something of that nature. So you'll have to play around with padding to get things to fit the way you want along with margin. So that being said, let's start adding the divs to this first content box. Let me zoom out so you can see it. And I'm going to go back to Dreamweaver or InDesign really quickly and show you what that first section is supposed to look like. So this is an easy section for me because I have two divs or two boxes, so to speak, and they just kind of sit next to each other. Really easy stuff to do. Now, Something, a little trick that I'm going to show you guys in a moment that will help you is part of the reason you create this in InDesign versus doing a Photoshop document or doing something by hand is not only is it neat and it helps you figure out your sizes, but it can also help you figure out your padding. So if I take the rectangle tool and I draw a rectangle between this and the edge and I look at the height, I know that my height needs to be 54 padding to make that space between. So this is another advantage of using InDesign to create uh, your layouts is that you can make a little box and find out what your padding actually needs to be by using a little box to kind of space everything out. So that can help you as well. Um, I'm going to come back. We're going to look at this first box and get the size. So 350 by 400. I'm going to come back to Dreamweaver and I'm going to start dropping those boxes in. So I can see that I'm in my div welcome. I'm going to come into the code real quick and I'm just going to open it up so I got some space in there. Hit refresh, nothing will happen because all I did was add some space in the code. And I'm going to go once again to insert, insert layout objects div tag. And CC, it will just say insert div, a little different. Uh, I'm going to create a new rule for this and a new ID. So this one's going to be called welcome image. That's my first box with the picture in it. So I'm going to call it welcome image. And I'm going to create a new CSS rule. This time, just to show you how it works, I'm going to leave it as an ID CSS rule. I know I'm not going to use the welcome image for anything other than the welcome image. So I will leave that as it is, just so you can see how it looks in the code. I'll click OK. And then I know my box needs to be, I believe, 400 height by, I think, 350 width. Let's check that again. Yep, 350. Put 350 in here. And because I checked my padding, I actually know what kind of margin I need to add. So I'm going to uncheck same for all. I'm going to come back. And it looks like it needs to be somewhere around like 94 padding on the left and about 54 on the height. So I'm actually going to set it to 50 and 90 because that's a little neater and I don't mind if this moves a little bit. So I'm going to set the top padding to 50 and the padding left to 90 or the margin I should say, not padding. Don't get thrown off there. So the reason I'm doing margin is instead of padding in the major div is because I know I'm going to have two other objects that might have different padding. However, I could do it another way. We'll do it this way first, and I'll show you the other way if I need to. So I've got the size. I've got that. And then I'm actually going to add a background color just so we can see things as they're happening. So it helps us kind of get a picture of what's going on. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to leave it there. It doesn't put a class in here. And then I'm going to click OK, and there is my div. It's padded nicely, exactly as this one is, or pretty close. And I got a color. It's all ready to go, and it's dropped in right here with content for ID. Welcome image goes here. You will notice that in the div tag, it says div ID welcome image, but it doesn't say class. The reason is because over here, it will create the, the class for it, but it'll have a little uh, octothorpe is actually what those are called. 
not a hashtag, but you can call it a hashtag if you want. It will create a little, uh, a new rule over here, and this is a name-based rule. So it says, this rule will only apply to something named welcome image. So if I named multiple things welcome image, this would apply to all of them. However, in this case, I'm only going to use it once, but it doesn't show up over here. So that's just a little note of how these type of rules work, just slightly differently. But it, all the coding is the same. If this was a dot, like a clash rule like this, it would still function the same. It's just a little different over here in the source code. That being said, now that I've created this div, which is right there, I'm going to come below it and I'm going to insert another div to go next to it. So I'm going to insert layout objects div tag. Now this one's going to be called welcome text because this is where the text is going to go. So welcome text, new CSS rule. I'll do the same thing, ID rule. Click OK. And then the same thing, I'm going to come to the box and I'm going to find out what my box size needs to be. So this case, the box is 425 by 400. So width, I believe, 425. And then the height is 400. I can do the same thing with my margin because I know that the top is going to be the same at 50. And the right this time, not the left, will be set to 90. And then hopefully those will line up nicely. But watch what's going to happen. I'm going to add a background image or background color. Let's make it pink so we can really see it. Click OK. And then when I insert it, it's going to drop down here. It's going to push the div open and it's not going to look right. The reason is because I need to set this object to float next to this object instead of to drop down onto the next line. So the way I do that is I'm going to come to the rule for it, welcome text, which is already pulled up. And I'm going to add a float property. So I'm going to reopen the edit rule. And I'm going to pull this up so you can kind of see, hopefully see a little bit what I'm doing, maybe not. Um, and I'm going to come back to box and I'm going to tell it to float right and hit apply. Now that didn't quite solve the problem. It did float it to the right. But this object doesn't have a float property applied to it. So it's still forcing this object below it. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to come back to welcome image, which is this left one. I'm going to go to edit rule. I'm going to go to box and I'm going to hit float and I'm going to have this one float to the left. Now when I do that and hit apply, they now sit side by side. So this one is set to float left and this one is set to float right. <coughs> that is how you get objects to line up when you only have a few objects. If you have a lot of objects, you can still use float properties, but there's some more complex coding. Like let's say you wanted to have a grid of like 20 objects. You can actually create columns in the CSS that will force it to adhere to a special grid, but that's a little more complicated, so we're not going to worry about that yet. Otherwise, if you had maybe nine thumbnails, I would just use a table because it keeps it all together. You can put it in just one div and have one float property applied to that div, and it's not so complicated. But now that we have those, I'm going to actually add the content inside them. So I'm going to highlight this white text. It's really hard to see. You can see it here in the code, though. Hit delete and go to insert image. So I don't need this to be a background image. I could make it a background image, but in this case, I'll just drop the image right into the div, and it's called welcome. So uh, this alternate tag text allows you to add um, accessibility text so that if someone's using like an, a browser reader that speaks out loud to them, it will show up. So I could call this uh, view of Paris skyline and it would kind of add some accessibility stuff. You won't really see much happening with that in the code. Um, you can see it says alt view of Paris skyline, but that's it. So that's dropped in. I can come back to this welcome image and probably drop off this background color just in case I would delete that property because there's no point in having it if it's not doing anything I want. And then I will come into the next section, once again highlight and delete the text, and come back to my InDesign document to grab the rest of this text. So I'm going to grab Visit Paris, all of that. I'm going to come back to Dreamweaver and I'm going to paste it in. Now it looks like something happened here, so it kind of dropped it in and it's not really fitting inside the box. So what happened here? So we can check a couple things. The first thing I noticed, and I can tell by looking at the code, is that when I clicked in there, I must not have clicked in there properly because my div is right here and this dropped outside of it. So I'm going to hit undo and instead I'm going to come into the code and make sure I'm clicked in the div there. So that's a problem you will probably run into at least once. And you can see now my text is properly spaced inside the div. Now that's done, um, I will come back to that div and I'm going to go to welcome text and I'm going to take off the pink background because that's really makes it hard to see. So by clicking this, I'm able to disable a property without deleting it. That way I can toggle it on and off and make sure it's, you know, doing what I want. So you can actually come through and click your properties and see kind of what is making the difference in your image here. So it really helps that you check those out.
Once I know I don't need it, I can click it and hit the trash can and delete that property altogether. Now I can style this type a little more by adding maybe some padding into the box to fit the type over or you know add a new heading rule for that visit Paris element. Let's zoom in. So I know at visit Paris I want to create, I want to break this text down like this and drop it over. So you'll notice when I did that a P tag pops up around here. Let me undo and show you again. If I undo, the text is just sitting here. If I hit enter, it wraps everything in a P tag. That's a paragraph tag that's kind of like a heading. So we have our headings and then we have paragraph. I'm happy with that, so I'm just going to let it be like that for now. I will later probably come back and add a different heading. For now, I can hit maybe like heading 2, which I already had created in an earlier video, and we'll use that. That's fine for now. So now I have this nice top section, really easy, not too complicated. There's a little bit of padding, a little bit of number crunching, but really easy. I'm going to save it. I'm going to click my CSS and save my CSS, and I'm going to preview in Firefox to make sure it looks right. So that looks good to me. It's exactly what I'm looking for. It works. One thing you should be aware of is if you notice, the text does not flow exactly the same as it does in the preview here, where we have a little kind of uh, orphan there. That's fine. You're just going to have to kind of understand that different browsers, if people are zoomed in, zoomed out, the way it's reading it, you can never really force text to fit exactly as you want. You kind of have to set the parameters and accept what's going to happen. If it's overflowing into another div or something or getting too long, of course, you got to come back and change it. But little things like how the line breaks, just let those be as they are. If you can force breaks as well. So let's say that I came back to my text here. And I go, well, this part should be a new paragraph, so I want to kind of drop that down. I can click in here and hit enter and create a new paragraph. And if I look at my code, you can see it adds a new paragraph tag. Or I can do something in the code. So if I click here in the it was Christianized here, I can add a break tag. So I can type this by hand. So I'm obviously still over here. i got to come into the code. Hit a tag, slash br. And so what happened when I did that is it guessed at what I was trying to do and it put the wrong thing. So sometimes you got to kind of go back and check. So br, close, and that will create a break tag. So let's see. So maybe I wrote it backwards. I think it actually might be br slash. Sometimes that throws me off. Yeah, there we go. So I actually wrote the tag backwards. But that causes a force break without forcing it to be a new paragraph. So if you have like lines that you want to be on separate lines, you can do it that way. You can also make a list, like an ordered list or an unordered list. But for this case, this is fine. I'm just going to use a break tag and let that be. Let's check that out once again in the browser. So you can see now, instead of entering and creating a whole new paragraph, it just breaks the line. So you can create force breaks, however. So I'll leave that as that is. Let me exit some of these little tags here and minimize that. And now let's go to the next section. So the next section I actually want to add is I want to do the contact section because it's a little easier than the gallery. And I also want to show you how to add an email link in your contact here. So I'm going to click down into this div here, which it looks like I'm in. So I'm in contact ID div. I'm going to enter, not there. You can see when I hit enter and I'm in the code, it adds a non-breaking line space. That's what that means. But if I'm in the code, it doesn't change anything. So I'm actually going to fix that. So there we go. So now I am in my div called contact, and I'm going to go add these boxes here. So let's go to Dreamweaver, I mean uh, InDesign, and let's find out what boxes we have. We have two boxes. Uh, we have number one for the text, which is called, it'll be called contact text, and it's 450 by 400. So let's add that. So once again, insert layout objects, div tag, ID, we'll call this contact text. New CSS rule, we'll leave this as is, I'm okay with that. Click OK. Box height 400 by 450, I believe, was the size. Now, I already know some things I'm going to need to do. So I know I'm going to need this one to float left based on what I did earlier. I also know that I'm probably going to want to add some margin. I don't know how much, so I'm going to come back to InDesign and double check and see if it's the same. It looks pretty similar, so I'm going to come down here. Yep, that looks pretty close, and that looks exactly the same. So I clearly designed my document to make that work. Let's come back. We'll add that padding. So the top was 50. Uncheck same for all. I'm going to have to delete this over here. Bottom zero. And then the left was 90. So let's do that. I'm going to add a background color so we can see it just for now. Make it yellow. Click OK. And then click OK. 
So now we have our div. It's already positioned pretty nicely. We know that that's what we want. We can delete the background color later. And now I'm going to add the second div for the image. So the image is a little differently sized than the other one. This one is 300 by 400. So I'm going to insert a div here. So I'm going to enter, drop that down in the code so I can see it. <coughs> insert, layout objects, div tag. This one will be called contact image. I don't want to hit a space. So I want to keep that one word. New CSS rule, contact image, OK. And now we can go through and do the same thing. So this one was 300 by 400. So it's 300 wide by 400 height. This one will need to float right. And then um, this one will need to add the same kind of margin. So top margin of 50 and then the right margin of 90. And let's check out how that looks. Let's add a background color to this one as well. So we'll make this one purple. Click OK. We'll click OK, and we can see that right there we were able to sort of replicate the same effect, understanding what rules to add at the beginning. If you're not sure what rules to add, that's OK. You can just click OK and come add them later. But if you know exactly what you need to do, it's a lot faster to just add it as you insert the div. So now I'm going to insert my image here by deleting the text. I can see I've got the text highlighted right there. Hit delete. Refresh. It will delete that text. I've clicked in the div properly. Insert image. Let's grab our contact image, which should be right there. Uh, this one will be called um, Tower View. And there we go. So that image is entered. So now let's add the text for this div. Oh, actually, before I go, let me delete this background rule because I don't need the purple background now. So grab it. Come here and delete. There we go. Well, at least it's disabled. There's the delete there. Kind of hard to see on the window there. So right there. Uh, so let's come back to this one here, and let's make sure we're clicked inside the div, which it kind of looks like I am, but I'm not. So let me actually come to the code and do that. Delete that, and then I'm going to paste the text. So let's go back to InDesign and copy our text. So let's grab contact us for booking by phone and by email. So let's go back to Dreamweaver, and let's paste that in. So paste. It's right there. We can click refresh. Now we can't see anything because of this bright yellow background. So let's delete the background. So we can go to contact text, disable the background, and then disable it by deleting it entirely. So it looks kind of like we have some formatting issues here. So over here, it kind of looks OK, but it doesn't actually work that way in the code. So what I can do is I can start adding some breaks to get things to sit where I want. So I'm going to add those br slash close tag there, and that will break things onto the next line. And I can add as many of those as I want. It's something you could do. I could also, of course, come in here and hit enter, and it will drop it into a new paragraph tag instead of using a break. But you can continue to use these break tags to get things to fit exactly as you want. So that way I've added three breaks below to kind of create some more space. I'm going to grab my contact us for booking, and I'm going to make that heading two. Now, it accidentally grabbed this content as well. I can fix that in the code very quickly. So I can see that I have my heading two tag, and my heading two closer tag is way down here. I'm going to grab that, copy it, and I'm going to delete it and put it up here just around the code or the text I want to have that tag. And then when I hit refresh, it kind of fixes it. This stuff moved over now, and the reason is because it's not contained in the paragraph tag. So I got to do the same thing. Move the paragraph tag and bring it up top here and refresh that. And now they got their own paragraph tag. I got to create a break. It's kind of kind of got to noodle around with stuff a little bit. So it can be kind of problematic when you first start working with it. So I'm just going to clean up my code a little bit so it looks not so messy. Um, bring that up so that we can kind of see what we're looking at. Delete bring that over. See, this is not changing anything in the content because I'm just moving the code around so that I can see what I'm doing and I know where everything is. So let me do the same here. Pull that up. So you can neaten and organize your code. That's why we have all these nice indents here is to make it orderly. But I'm going to copy these break tags and I'm going to add a few break tags right here, right here. Hit refresh. There we go. I'm going to delete a break tag from here because it looks like too much space. And there we go. So now I have my contact us for booking, and I've got this stuff space. I can continue to play with this and get this right, but for now, that's fine. Let me show you quickly how to add an email link. So if you would like to add a link that opens up their email client and allows them to email you directly from your site, all you have to do is come down to your link and write email to 
colon and then type in the email address. So if I then type in Danielle at DanielleFeliciano.com, it will add it like a link. So it should add this as a link. And then the link doesn't look any different, you'll notice, because my link class, like the actual rule, is set to that the link is white. So we actually don't see that it's a link at this moment. But when we go to view it in browser, I will be able to show you. So I'm going to save everything. And I'm going to open it in Firefox and take a peek at what we have here. So there we go. So we have our first part of the site looks good. We've got these links have nice hovers. If I click over here, you'll see that I can hover. If I click, it will try to get me to go to email, but it's not letting me do it at this moment. So the reason is because I don't have an email client up. Let me make sure I've actually written that code properly. So email to or should be mailed to. Actually, I think it's mailed to. See, I'm having moments myself. So I think it's mailed to, not email to. Should be mailed to. Save it. Preview in Firefox. And now that should function. So it's mailed to. Say, oops, I typed it wrong. But that will open their mail client and allow them to email you directly from your site. So had a little forgetfulness there. But there you can see that that functions. And I've changed my link styles during the break so that when a link is visited, it stays white. It doesn't change color once you actually come back to the site. But there you go. So that's the main first parts of content, an email link, and how to play a little bit with your float properties. In the next video, I'm going to show you a little bit more about how to get stuff in for the gallery.